All right, what's up guys? So I am Christine and I will be here to answer a few questions for you guys apparently. So let's get at it. <laughs> Sorry, that was a really bad intro, but here we go. <laughs> So I went to University of Washington for undergrad and I was a neuroscience major and I minored in political science and I was a part of a sorority so that was honestly a really huge part for me in undergrad because I feel like it gave me like such an amazing window into like the lives of other people and I don't know just like being surrounded by that many people at once when you like immerse yourself into college I think is like an amazing like sort of experience you never really get to experience otherwise. So anyways, um, I loved to play tennis in undergrad and longboard and just anything that has to do with being outside because I just love the fresh air and I love like, like I feel like you get to know people at like their genuine like most true self when you're on a hike with them, personally, personal belief. But anyways, um, so yeah, and I am sorry if this sounds like kind of like right straight from my head because I'm answering these questions like right off the bat because I feel like that helped me give you guys the most genuine response like I'm talking to you on like I don't know like a coffee date or something so I feel like honestly like people usually ask me like okay so how did you major in neuroscience and then minor in political science and choose dentistry um and it's also interesting because I actually went abroad for art. So I went to an art program in London and France for my study abroad. And I honestly feel like having such a big depth and just like expansive like knowledge of other fields really helped me choose dentistry because it helped me realize like what I really loved and what I actually like didn't want in my future job. Um, I was originally considering going into the medical field uh, just because... I really wanted to become like a pediatric surgeon or something like I thought that was like the dream like an amazing goal but and I still think it's an amazing thing but in the future I really wanted to be able to raise a family and just I didn't want my life to completely revolve around my job and I want to be exceptional at what I'm at but I also don't want it to be the only thing that like holds my core attention in life because um, I think above all else, like family is the most important thing. So I wanted to do a job that gave me both the ability to love what I do and like help people through the medical field, but also that let me grow as a family member. So that is why I chose dentistry. And actually at first really, really did not want to do dentistry because my brother and my dad are both dentists. And I was like, <laughs> I'm, not doing that too but then I realized like with all my love of art and just like medical fields in general with like neuroscience and stuff I decided it'd be kind of an amazing job to do so yeah <laughs> okay so with the DAT that was a journey and a half okay so I studied for it after sophomore year and I did it uh, for eight weeks. So I started in, I think like July maybe. And I did it for eight weeks until literally like the day before my study abroad. So I took the DAT literally one day before I went abroad for three weeks. So I just kind of was in like huge panic mode in the beginning. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I literally don't know how to study for this. I feel like super inadequate. And there's only like eight weeks for me to do this. But then I kind of realized, oh my god, I need to do this. I, I can't just like be freaking out about doing this. And I feel like a lot of people will at first. But DAT boot camp helped me tremendously. Like it was such a lifesaver. And I would recommend that to anyone who's trying to do the DAT like for the first time. Or take the DAT, not do it. But yeah, and I think what really helped me was taking practice tests and taking those again. Because when I tried to absorb all the information beforehand, like reading through all the notes and stuff, it was not helping because it just made me like feel so behind because I was taking so long to review them. But my biggest tip would just be like take the practice tests and then take them again. 
basically, I think that this goes back to the last question where the DAT actually did really help me because I got a lot higher score than I was actually anticipating. And so that was really helpful because I think that they do like take that into a heavy consideration. And so I got a perfect score on two of the sections. Uh, so on the PAT and critical reading, I got 30s. And I think that really helped because I know a lot of schools do emphasize they really want you to be good at PAT and critical reading because it's like more of skills you need throughout dental school to survive rather than just like knowledge that you're memorizing. So I think that was super helpful. Um, and overall I got a 26, so yeah, I mean, that was good. Uh, but let's see what else what set me apart. Oh, personal essay, I think really does make an impact because you can really like show who you are that isn't based on scores. So I think that really helped because I showed more of my personal side. And I think the biggest thing is just really try to emphasize what your vulnerabilities are. Cause like, I think at the end of the day, those are our absolute strongest strengths. Um, I know some people would think otherwise and say like your strengths are your strengths, but I personally think what you learn from all your weaknesses are like, and not the kind of weaknesses that are like, I'm too hardworking or like something like that. Like I think truly, honestly, the places where it was the hardest in your life and you had to get through that. And even if you didn't get through that initially as strongly as you would have hoped you did in the past, I think really focusing on those hardships really does reflect the kind of person that you are. And so I think you should focus on just letting yourself be vulnerable in your application. But yeah. Interview day, I, okay, it was really weird because it felt super like surreal, but not in the sense that I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm interviewing. But like in the feeling that I was like, why am I not more nervous about this right now? Uh, and it wasn't because I was just like, you know, super like, I'm amazing. Like it wasn't like that kind of confidence. It was just like going into it. I was just wondering like, I don't know. It just felt like, well, they want me if they gave me an interview, you know? Like, so I think when you go into it, you have to have the mentality like, okay, I'm going to go into it. And they sent me an invitation for a reason. Like, don't go into it like super nervous. Like, oh my God, like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Because when you're interviewing someone, like you want to be interviewing someone who's confident in their abilities and who they are as a person and not someone who like needs validation from someone else to tell them hey you deserve to be here like you should intrinsically feel like you know if I'm at this point in the interview process and I'm like standing in front of them I do deserve this opportunity to apply for the school so I think that really helps but I was interviewing at so I interviewed at three schools, so, and those were, well, I accepted interviews from three schools. So I decided that I didn't really want to fly out to schools I didn't highly consider going to. So my first interview was at University of California, San Francisco, so UCSF. And then my second interview was University of Michigan. And then my third one was University of Washington. And so I think it was nice to have California first because it's just a really different vibe. Like they're like, I don't know. I like, I loved UCSF school, but it just kind of felt like I was in Black Mirror. Like, I don't know why the campus and everything, like everyone was so happy and shiny. And I was just like, oh my God, is this real? Like, ah, I don't know. Um, but their interview, I did cry at the interview. Um, and the, the interview we actually cried too. So it was a good interview, but I was just talking about my vulnerabilities. And I think they really appreciated seeing the more human side of me. So yeah, I would just stick to just owning who you are and like literally what you've been through because it's a great way to connect with someone. Um, and Michigan, I thought I felt like a CEO at the top of a building because they were like having it on the seventh floor and it was like a huge window view of everything. And all the applicants though, like kind of, I don't, everyone seemed so cold at first, but it was weird because by the end of the interview there, like, they were the friendliest like people I've ever met like at an interview. Everyone was just so like genuinely like, it felt like good camaraderie there. So I really liked the interview at Michigan, but then I just couldn't see myself 
really just living there right after the interview but then my whole decision process was like separate so anyways um and then university of washington just felt super underwhelming for me because i went to UW for undergrad so i wasn't really like putting any much like any high weight on the interview i guess because i already did like the school so it wasn't like a huge it's gonna make or break whether i think the school is good or not like it just was like a good good ground Oh, freak. I kind of touched on this in the past question. Also, I didn't really answer the past question like I should have, but it's okay. Because uh, I was asking like more of like, what's the style of the interview? And I was just like, ha ah, ha I don't know, I feel great. Really. <laughs> but <laughs> tips you would, I would give for the interview process is genuinely don't freak out. Um, also, like just try to, every place you go to while you're at the interview, just try to imagine yourself there. like. Also, with the people you're interviewing, try to imagine, could I become friends with them? Could I hang out with them? Even though I know you're not going to be in, like, in a dental class with like all the people you've interviewed with, it's just a good practice to get into because also then you're not freaking out about the interview if you're just thinking, oh, can I just imagine myself like being friends with this person? Or like, oh, could I imagine myself like getting taught by this professor? And it's just nice to like kind of ground yourself, I guess. Um, but another tip I would give is just... I don't know, kind of have fun with it like like pretend like you're interviewing them you know like I know that's kind of a weird thing but it's like something my friend always tells me when I'm about to go on a date she's like dude I'm like okay dude I'm like kind of nervous for this date and she's like well don't think of it as them interviewing you think of it as you interviewing them you know it doesn't matter whether they like you but what matters most is like do you like them and that is a great mentality for interviews also dates. Uh, anyways. <laughs> this was really hard because I was deciding between like three great schools and in the end I was really deciding between two main ones. So I waited until the very last day to decide because I was going back and forth like every single day it was literally like flip flopping back and forth. Like do I want to go to University of Washington or do I want to go to University of Michigan? Like I don't, I don't know, like every day I was like, oh my god, yes, I'm going to Michigan. Or every day, the next day it would switch to be like, oh, duh, I'm going to Washington, bro. Like, you know, and so I was just very, like, it was hard because there's like two sides of me that I was really trying to unpack and like get to know more. And so one side that wanted to go to Michigan, it was more of like, like, dude, this is like an adventure, you know? Like, I was born in Michigan, and so I was like, I could go back to my roots, and even though I only lived there for like six months when I was a kid, but I was like, I could just, I don't know, you know, like, I could grow into a different person here. And I really thought, like, the whole school atmosphere was amazing, and even though it was a super old school feel, I kind of liked that, because I kind of felt like I was in a different world. So I was really choosing between there, and then Washington, I was like, okay, well, all my family's here, and all my like, this is like a home for me. And I don't really want to stay in the same place and be stagnant, but also like my family has been for there for me my entire life. And I want to be there for them now in grad school. And just because I'm at the same place doesn't mean I'll like be the same person, but it just felt like why, why wouldn't I choose Michigan at this point? Um, but then at the very end, I realized I don't have to go to a different school or a different place to really grow into a new person and like become the person that I want. Because I was giving so much weight of that like to the dental school. I was like, well, this school, let me do this or this school, let me do this. But you have to get out of that mentality and realize like you are the person that will decide like who you become and you will decide how much you grow as a person, no matter where you are, no matter who you're around. Because you choose people you're around too. And so... At the end, I chose Washington because I realized I can still be like an amazing growing person, even if I'm in the same place. And I really want to give back to my family and spend time with them and put them first because that's all they did for me in undergrad. And so, yeah. Okay, so the transition from going to pre-dent to being an absolute, okay. Ah!
<laughs> okay, so this was weird because my first year of dental school was COVID. So all most of it was all online and I was kind of honestly, like honestly speaking, because it was online, I was like, dang, like dental school's a breeze. Uh, <laughs> Cause we were on pass fail and everything just felt like we were just learning it without having to really be super stressed about things because we were so stressed about COVID and everything else in general. Like we weren't, they wanted to do a service by like not making us stress about grades too. So they made a pass fail because every family is going through something different. But I was not overwhelmed until we went back to in-person. Second year when that hit, it was like an insane amount of new like work and time at school that I was not used to experiencing. Like all this pressure on like all these tests with new grades and just rank and everything felt like a whirlwind. But don't worry, because after the first quarter, then you get used to it and like you're kind of numb to it. And so it just like feels like normal, which like sucks. But at the same time, it's like, <laughs> at least you can get through it, bud. So yeah, um, <laughs> and you absolutely feel imposter syndrome like 1200% of the time, every single day, every day, every day. I think my friends are what make me most excited. Honestly, it's like, I don't know, like I love going to school, even on the hardest days, sometimes it's so fun. Like I remember last quarter, I went to school on a weekend um, because we just go in every weekend to catch up on lab stuff. But it was probably one of the best days in lab I've ever had because we were just, <laughs> we were all like on the brink of sanity and just like losing it. And we were just like laughing at so minuscule things. Like it just felt so fun and I was like, wow, I'm having a great time even though I'm really behind in a class and I'm just trying to catch up. But then by the end of it, I felt like I was ahead in the class and I was like on top of it. And I guess the people that like make the time spent there easier is just incredible. So yeah. So my biggest piece of advice to a dental student or a pre-dental student, um, like bro, you got this, calm down. <laughs> First of all, like stop freaking out. Uh, I think it's great if you're reaching out to people, but also like just be confident in your capability and you will get into dental school. Like if you put in the time and you put in the effort and you have the passion, you will get in. So stop freaking out and use more of that energy to just be better, you know? Like I know you guys are already on the road to being great, but like put use, put good use to that energy, you know? I, that's just my piece of advice. Uh, <laughs> Also, that's what I tell myself every day when I freak out about the future. I'm like, okay, well, instead of freaking out, what if I just be better? And I don't know, it's good. It's a good life motto to live by. Um, not saying you're not good enough right now. Understand first, you're good enough uh, right now, like in the present. But second, if you want to be better, set goals to do that. Set goals that are attainable to just reach what you want to be because you can. Yes, you can. You can. If you liked listening to this, or if you didn't, I don't really know what to tell you besides I don't know why you're still watching this. But uh, <laughs> I'm Christine and I film a little series for my middle school called the Fluoride Series. So if you want to watch that, it is on YouTube and I have a little page on Instagram. And if you want to follow me on Instagram too, um, for that, I'll have the link down below. This is great, this is fun. Um, I feel like I did a lot of reflection, self-reflection right now, uh, even though I was trying mostly to help you guys. I feel like I spent time like remembering why I'm in dental school because second year is tough and I hope you guys enjoy it, but also like strap in. So yeah, that's about it for me. See you guys. <laughs>